Close your chin. Welcome into this hour of CBS Sports HQ. I'm Joe Musso alongside my cornerman, Hakeem Dermish. And Hakeem, once again, we emerge unscathed and victorious, you and I. Indeed we do as UFC delivers yet again. Live sports for the second time in five days. And how about this? Give it up for the old guy, Glover Teixeira. UFC fight night in Jacksonville. Light heavyweight contenders Anthony Smith and Glover Teixeira clashing in the main event. Smith has won four of his past five, while the 40-year-old Teixeira has won three in a row. Round one, Smith connecting with a quick one-two punch on Teixeira. Early on, it was all Smith Teixeira plus 300 following the first round, but a turn for Teixeira in round two. Teixeira gets Smith along the cage, throwing haymakers. Following round two, Teixeira was plus 225. If you're live betting, Teixeira entering as the underdog at plus 180. Round three, Teixeira hits Smith. Uppercut stuns Smith and attacks. Hits him with the hard right. Takes him down to the mat. Smith lost a couple teeth in this fight. Uh, Teixeira came out to welcome to the jungle. He was an absolute animal in the octagon. And give it up for, for Anthony Smith, too, for hanging in there. Um, round three, this is incredible. Still on the mat here. Teixeira from over top, busting open Smith's ear. Teixeira taking it to Smith on back-to-back -back rounds. Continuing his dominance into the fifth round. And, and it's, it's all over. Wailing away. TKO for Glover Teixeira. His fourth consecutive win. Hope you had to share at plus 180. Have a night, kid. In the co-main event, Big Ben Rothwell taking on Ovin St. Pru at the heavyweight division. Rothwell 37 and 12 in his storied MMA career. St. Pru making his heavyweight debut. And in the first round, things got a little hairy. Rothwell catching a kick and dictating the fight. This one turns into a 10-finger choke that took some steam out of OSP, but it would move to the second. St. Pru straight out front and catching punches on the kisser. Late in the second round, St. Pru would get in the mix. Here with a left hand, gonna score some big points and turn the fight with a knockdown. Because how do you chop down a tree? One swing of the ax at a time. Under 20 seconds left in the final round. St. Prue, Rothwell standing in, emptying the tank. OSP closing with a fury, but would it be enough? The answer, no. Rothwell winning by split decision. The King of Kenosha victorious on a Wednesday night. Heck of a fight here. Alexander Hernandez against Drew Dober in a lightweight bout. Dober's one is. Here we go. Round one. Hard left cuts Hernandez above the eye. Final minute of round one. Dober connects a nice combo. Hernandez starting to wobble. Hernandez retreating all through round two. Then late in round two, Dober lands a left that sends Hernandez backward. And Dober didn't stop. Less than a minute later, Dober landing bombs left and right. Hernandez losing his footing. Dober continues to pound until Hernandez attempts to grapple. Our own Brian Campbell commenting on this fight on Twitter. Too fast, too furious was Drew Dober. Huge combos. Dober breaks out easily of the grapple, lands one more left on Hernandez, and the ref calls it. Drew Dober, six out of seven. Three straight wins. Three in a row will give him a ranking in the top 15 next week as Drew Dober TKO on Alexander Hernandez. A couple of 135 pounders going at it. Ricky Simone and Ray Borg in the bantamweight division. Simone, the favorite despite losses in his last two bouts. Borg, meanwhile, 13 and 4 in his mixed martial arts career. First round, Simone going to the ground. Number of takedowns in the first, four to be specific, one after another. Really grounding on him, but then in the second, the fight stayed on their feet for better or for worse. Ray Borg, a hammering right hand. Following up here with a nice little combination of punches as well. Goes to the body. 
taking him to the body shop, rotating the tires. Then in the third round, both fighters removing the restrictor plates, going blow for blow down the stretch. Take a look at the clock. Ten seconds left, and both guys swinging for the fences, knowing this was going to be a close decision. And then you love to see it. Go at each other's necks and, and a loving embrace after the bout. Three rounds go the way of Ricky Simone. He wins by split decision and improves to 16 and 3 in his MMA career. Heavyweight bout between former champ Andre Arlovsky and Felipe Linz, who's making his UFC debut after competing in Bellator. Arlovsky's UFC career began 20 years ago. Trading shots in round one. Lin shows his speed on his counter punches, and then with a minute left in Ooh. round one. Arlovsky, nice spinning back fist. Spin cycle. Nice, I like that. Ends the first round on a good note. Second round, Lynn's landing more quick punches. And then we go round three. The two trading strong blows. Lynn's continues to counter Arlovsky, firing right back. Arlovsky plus 170 in this one. And it's Arlovsky, unanimous decision over Felipe Linz in his UFC debut. Ten of Arlovsky's past 11 fights have all gone the distance. The main card led off with a lightweight bout between Michael Johnson and Tiago Moises. These two even money at the opening bell. Johnson, the more experienced fighter, but lost his last two bouts. First round, all Johnson. Landing a left, following with the right. Johnson outstriking Moises 28 to 1 in the opening round, but these martial arts are mixed, my friends. In the second, 25 seconds in, Moises moves to the ankle. Gonna put the Brazilian in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Moises earns the stoppage via ankle lock. Getting a Muay Thai mix in there to start off the main card. Moises landing just one punch in the entire fight, but improves to 13 and four, his MMA record, Thiago called for a future matchup against former champion Anthony Showtime Pettis. So here is a look at the results from the main card. As you see, the main event, Glover Teixeira taking down Anthony Smith. Uh, what, how's the saying go? Knowledge in your mind. Money in your pocket. And it is in your pocket indeed. Hakeem Dermish taking the over there two and a half rounds, but it was a fantastic card top to bottom, starting with Tiago Moises taking down Michael Johnson in a technical fashion that heel lock submission to get the night started. Here to add some context to the conflict, UFC Hall of Famer Sugar Rashad Evans and the King of Swing, Brian Campbell. Fellas, a night in the UFC to be remembered, not your average Wednesday. Exciting action top to bottom, really, but let's talk main event. 40 years old, never looked better than it did on Glover to share a Wednesday night as he system systematically dismantled Anthony Smith. Uh, Rashad, what's running through your head as you're watching this beatdown? Well, I mean, I just couldn't believe, first of all, that he survived the early onslaught. I mean, when you're 40 years old, you don't typically take beatings like that and keep on moving forward and then turn around and land meaningful shots on your own. So I was really impressed with that part. But just the pure, just, just tenacity, just to get it done, I was impressed with that. And I was also impressed with Lionheart's ability just to take that punishment. But as much as Glover Teixeira's victory is the headline on this night, you have to look at that severe beating that Anthony Smith did absorb. I thought yeah. that fight could have been stopped as early as the third round, and specifically after round four, when Smith walks to his back to his corner telling his, his trainers that his teeth are falling out and is as if they weren't even listening to him. This was a brutal fight, one you thought maybe Teixeira could get an early finish if he just committed to it. But like Rashad said... You look at the game plan we laid out ahead of time on how Anthony Smith might be able to win this fight. He let that play out for two rounds. He looked fantastic. But the old man, as they say, power the last thing to go. And it was power that won on this night. Four straight wins for the 40-year-old. Meantime, the co-main event, Big Ben Rothwell gets Ovin St. Pru. OSP making his debut at heavyweight. Rothwell wins via split decision. Rashad, is that how you saw the fight? 
Uh, yeah, that's how I saw the fight. You know, I just think didn't think that OSP got enough off. You know, I thought that he was too worried about how he was going to feel, you know, afraid of, you know, trying to reserve some gas, it seemed like. And he just needed to step on it, you know. But big, big uh, Ben just kept the pressure on and just was very methodical about how he approached just picking OSP apart and really left no holes for OSP. OSP did have his moments, but for the most part, it was Big, ben, big Ben's night the whole night. Yeah, this OSP experiment to heavyweight, his team had talked about it, maybe one and done if it didn't work out well for them. And certainly you got mixed results on this night for what we thought he would bring in in terms of advantages, maybe in speed and athleticism and having really good size for a potential heavyweight. After always being a large light heavyweight, OSP largely circled away and avoided contact in this one until late when he really had to land some big strikes to get Rothwell off of him. You saw Big Ben call out Alexi Olenek, who just had a big upset win over Fabricio Verdum. Verdum. It's survive in advance here for Ben Rothwell, not the heavyweight debut OSP was looking for. All right, let's look ahead to fight night on Saturday, the UFC's third event in eight days. Main event, a heavyweight bout between Alistair Overeem and Walt Harris. And as you guys know, this will be an extremely emotional fight for Harris. The two were initially scheduled to fight last December, but Harris withdrew after the kidnapping of his, of his stepdaughter. She was later found dead after a month-long search. Saturday night, Harris is going to be fighting in her honor. Certainly going to take a lot of strength for Harris to even step into the octagon. As for what we expect to happen on Saturday night, Brian, how are you evaluating this matchup? I think this is Harris's fight to win, and you look at that added bit of outside the cage stuff which is very large looming over him yet at some time when you're going through a personal turmoil as Walt Harris and his family was sometimes throwing yourself into your work so to speak is the best way to sort of find peace and focus during a hard time I expect Harris to come out emotional but also smart and look to get a big win look he's going in there against Alistair Overeem who's always going to be a tough out but this is the second half of Overeem's career we saw him in a fight against Jair Rosenstruck last year in which he looked good for most of it and got stopped big late Harris trying to knock on that door to become a legitimate heavyweight title threat this is that type of fight you need to win and I think when you add in that added narrative I like Walt Harris here big to have a big moment during a tough time yeah, I second that as well, too. I definitely believe that, you know, Walt has the momentum on his side as far as just having that hunger and desire, you know, working through that pain and the fuel of having that love and loss the way that he did. You know, that that is a great fuel for fighting. And, and, and just, you know, not, not to put that in those words, but just, you know, he, he found a lot of strength in that whole thing. So he's, he's coming to this fight with that mental edge on the whole thing. But at the same time, having that mental edge, having too much pressure on making this that moment that is the moment after, you know, making this one too special, it can have adverse effects. And going against a guy like Alistair Overeem, who's a smart, cagey veteran, he can see those kind of things. So Walt has to be smart and composed tomorrow and not get overwhelmed by the emotion of what he wants to do as far as win this fight for his uh, late uh, daughter. Successful fight night on Wednesday. Looking forward to us another successful fight night on Saturday. Brian Campbell, Rashad Evans here on CBS Sports HQ. Thank you, man. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.